Catherine Hamm, Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority, 630. WMAL. 607 on WMAL. ABC's Tom Rivers is in London, where there have been riots the last couple of days. Tom, I understand that last night was somewhat of a quiet night in London, but uh, violence has spread to other parts of the country. What's the latest over there? Exactly. For the first time in four nights, London was pretty quiet. The police put a lid on it with the addition of 10,000 additional police. All leave was canceled. Everybody's on extended shift patterns here, and it finally, finally did the trick here. But uh, guess what? It's popped up elsewhere. Uh, it's gone up to places like Birmingham, Leeds, Liverpool. I guess if you wanted to pick the worst city last night, Manchester, some ten, uh, roughly 2,000, 2,000 people on the streets there, smashing uh, storefronts, going into shops, coming out with uh, all kinds of things, TVs, you name it, clothing. So that's kind of where the flashpoint was last night. Obviously, they're going to redouble efforts up there in Manchester, but if you do that, that means another city may be more prone to this activity down the line. So we get, this thing isn't done yet, but uh, it seems to be moving around the country a bit. Help me understand what it is that's the underpinning of all this. What are the protesters upset about? The, no, they're not protesters. They're actual thugs. They're out there right. just, you know, breaking into buildings. But but what is it that's motivating them to take to the street? What's their argument? What's their beef? Well, they, they really don't have a cause. Now, if we go back to last Thursday up in North London, the neighborhood is called Tottenham. An individual, a 29-year-old man, was, uh, was shot by the police and killed. Now, an independent police commission report has just come out saying that the man did not fire at the police. That will further uh, anger the locals in that community. Uh, when that happened, immediately after, a few dozen members of the community marched down to the local police station. That was really the spark that set this whole thing off. Now... We're talking a number of days down the road. It has absolutely nothing. That event has absolutely nothing to do with the activities we're seeing being played out up and down this country. Basically, we're looking at sheer criminality at this stage of the game. It's in the kids' parlance. They're going out shopping each night. Mm. Well, and Parliament was supposed to meet about this. Is there anything they can realistically do? Are they call? I, I guess they're calling out more police or allowing for these extended shifts or something. Are they? Can they yeah. make anything happen? Well, what they're going to do, they're going to, the Parliament will meet on Thursday. Obviously, they're going to get together. The, uh, all 635 members will condemn the, uh, the rioting up and down the country. They will also pledge to rebuild these communities. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of rebuilding to do, especially we're looking uh, 12 months down the road at the Olympics. So they want to get, you know, everything ship shape uh, as far as that goes as well. But that's going to be about it. And then they're going to go away for. Uh, for the rest of the summer break. So this is the first time in nine years they've come back during the summer to deal with uh, with a, a crisis situation. But, yeah, it's going to last one day, and that's going to be it. All right, last question. Let's go on this. What's yeah. the rest of the country saying about all of this? Everybody's shaking their heads, simply because, as, you, as we alluded to at the top, there isn't a predominant reason, there a predominant cause for all of this. It's just pretty mindless, pretty senseless, and people are, are shaking their heads, and, and, and people are worried, too. That will this, you know, show up on their doorstep? Mm -hmm. Will it will it come to their community next? And people are, are are worried and concerned. All right, Tom. Great to have you on the program. We appreciate your Thanks, time. Thanks, Tom. Take care. ABC's Tom Rivers reporting live from London. Right. So that's the question we were talking about last hour. We're going to ask it now as well. Is you know, are you worried about coming to our doorstep? I mean, look, there's there is an underpinning that there there is at least a narrative out there that this is the youth of of England that is upset because they've been cut hard by austerity right. measures because of the downturn in the economy and because things that they used to get they're not getting anymore and this is their way of saying hey we're going to get ours because everybody else is is getting theirs and we've been cut and this is the reason why they're really on the street and that this the shooting of this of this kid or this young person in Tottenham was just the start but it really has this bigger welfare uh, narrative behind it. I got the sense from hearing what Tom had to say that this was just to some people taking advantage of that situation. Right. That sort of just deciding that they were they wanted to go out and do bad, and and they, and that they're just sort of piling on to a sort of a yeah. sensitive situation. And that's well, usually how riots happen. It yeah, starts. But I, right. I think anyone control. I think anyone who tries to adopt this riot as part of their political narrative obviously 
that's a huge risk. I think a, a couple liberals jumped out real quick and mm. said these these youth are disenfranchised and they're being cut and this is why we can't cut benefits and now oops they're wrecking all of England. So that maybe not the best people to have on your team is right. part of your argument. Well, the, the, the police over there are also saying you know the reason why we can't handle it as well as we we should be able to is because we've been cut as well. Yeah. <laughs> so got that maybe down. it's because the bobbies don't have guns. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's. Everybody, it's once again, it's everybody. Oh, well, I need my money. I got my money. One triple eight six thirty nine six two five. I think it could actually happen here. Jeff in DC, you're with the morning majority. Hey, Jeff. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, you had asked if this could ever happen in this country, yeah. but uh, you missed the train. It already has. Last spring in Madison, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. during Katrina, during LA, Philadelphia, where the mayor just declared a, a, a curfew at nine yeah, o'clock. Right. It's been happening. It's just. When liberals do it, it's called protesting. <laughs> when conservatives do it, it's called mobs. Yeah. Well, it it, it hasn't been to this extent, though. I yes, mean, it has. Uh, it's the news don't re- doesn't report it. Most most major news outlets don't consider Wisconsin part of the states. It's just flyover country. Well, I don't remember seeing burning buildings in Wisconsin. There was violence. There, there was there viol- a, there there definitely a, violence and a destruction. Difference in how things are reported. Uh, when it's conservatives versus liberals, that that is true. I don't think we've seen it to the extent. I mean, of course, if you count the L.A. riots, yeah, but that's quite a quite a bit ago now. Yeah, I mean, th- no, there was definitely violence in Wisconsin, and there was destruction, and there was vandalism for sure. And we saw in, in Katrina there were a lot of problems as well. But it, it, if it happens here in the next couple of of months, or you know, by the end of the year or whatever. And the narrative is because you've cut so much right. from the budget, and you know people don't have as as much assistance from the government anymore. Trust me, that will be a big story. That will be on the news every single night, no matter where it happens in this country. If it's Wisconsin, or if it's in you know Philadelphia, or Washington, or New York City. One thing that would be different, of course, in this country is is that we heard these stories about how in in the streets of London, shopkeepers were defending customers with rolling pins. Yeah. Yes. In this country, <laughs> that we was- won't. There won't be no rolling pins. That would look different. It will look a little different. Uh, yeah, that would get ugly, too. Michael and Alney, you're with the Morning Majority. Hey, Michael. Yeah, what's happening in England will happen in the United States unless we stop these ultra-liberal promises, promises that cannot be kept by a socialist agenda. This is the result of failed promises, of promising people all these goodies. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the law of liberalism, but it always fails. And when it fails... People act like babies. They took away my candy bar. They took away my ball. They took away my benefit. This is the result of liberal policies. This is what's going to happen here unless we defeat the president in 2012. All right. Thank that's you, Michael. All I can say because that's the truth. All right. Appreciate the phone call. one 888 